And David said, the FBI has sent through the first tranche of the files regarding its investigation into the Chicago Gary heroin trafficking ring. On the line, heroin trafficking ring involving Lou Andrew Edwards, Muez Akonde, Abiodun Agbele, and Bola Ahmed Tinubu. All mention of Tinubu is redacted. That was the argument yesterday when people start saying, oh, the court has refused. No. Remember, I tried to correct it that yesterday. The court said they don't want where his name is directly mentioned. So as you're reading through that file, wherever his name is directly mentioned, it became redacted, meaning the blanket off. But that is like an expert to us. We already know <laughs> what it means <laughs> is wherever you see the redaction, you know the name that should be there. You can print it on your own and put the name there. After all, the Supreme Court has made somebody president. There is nobody that will go and remove the person, but the court of public opinion will remove who they will remove and put who they will put. And it is, it is a challenge even to the, it's, it's a concern even in the international community that this file is flying all over the world. So what is the boldness the person is going to have going to international meeting, negotiating with business bodies and co, knowing that a document that contains such incriminating facts are flying around, even though your name is redacted. Okay, so now I wanted to say something. Unfortunately, this is one of the prayers that the Supreme Court judges ignored. You know, this trafficking of a thing that led to the for future that happened in the U.S. Uh, I watched Eze Kwesi. She was like saying that that is even one of the painful aspect of this judgment that was released. That this prayer that is of great importance, so that the world will not look at Nigeria you know, with the other side of their eyes. The Supreme Court was supposed to look into this issue and rule on it, but they never mentioned it. And now that these files are out, let's see what we are going to be discovering. So for those that want to read, you can go to the website, you can see it attached to their plain site and go there to get to take a look at the content yourself. While we'll keep like breaking it down for you guys to get to understand it with Dr. It tells if I may, talk back to you. If I may ask you a question, which Supreme Court were you expecting to dare this kind of this kind of uh, Pandora box? What integrity do that does that head of the Supreme Court have to be able to constitute a panel that will have such integrity? Is it not this same Supreme Court that have been in the air? Is it not this same Supreme Court that was exposed by a Supreme Court judge before he removed his official regalia and retired? He did not do that as, he did not say what he said as a retired Supreme Court judge. He said it sitting on his official seat in the Supreme Court chamber, no, in the Supreme Court uh, uh, courtroom wearing his full regalia as a justice of the Supreme Court and then giving his valedictory speech which is more like his final judgment he judged the Supreme Court he found the Supreme Court head guilty before he bowed out of service is that the same Supreme Court you expected justice you're expecting too much you're expecting too much just like Dele Farotimi Faro said, these Supreme Court judges you're talking about, did they come from Togo or Taiwan or where? They came from Nigeria. They came from the stocks of people like Adams or Shomole, uh, you know, uh, like Wicked, like them godfathers, them godfathers. Are we not going to be discussing today the kind of scandal that is rocking the Supreme Court and the judiciary? Then you will tell me whether that kind of body can ever execute justice they will be dishing out judgment but not justice so let's leave that let's just deal with this for now and then probably we'll end with them
So now let me give us a background. So both of all of you, maybe those who want to read and those who would like to read. And when we come on air, you want to ask a question. It would be nice that you ask such question in a constructive way. When you go through that file, it is a, is a coordinated investigation between the FBI and the drug enforcement agency. And everything, both when they monitor, they did investigation, they monitored cars, they trailed the cars they were using, where the cars were parked, who was driving the car, the plate number of the car, and, every, and the number of hours, because all those things were required. They recorded everything. And after months of gathering all those basic data, that made them believe it's not like our EFCC that will pounce on you first of all, dump you in the prison before they start doing investigation. No, these people will let you do whatever you're doing. They will trail you. They will follow you. They will gather all the information they need to gather before they now convince themselves that they have a case against you and officially. So from the first page of this document, we are where they are recording the logging in, their investigation, their monitoring, their, 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 their dashboard, you know, everything they did and how they did it. Because a judge will want to be sure that you did not trample upon anybody's right simply because you want to uh, indict and convict the person. And so it took them up to page 45. It was, it was now at page 45 that they said, we have a case, and now they have the title of the case. So show me the slide on that page 45 so that our audience will understand how we arrived at that place, okay? Page 45. Because in that place now, now this is, here is it. And now you can see, it says um, um, classification is now unclassified. And date was 4th of October 1990. FM, FBI, Indiana Police. The director of FBI, FBI Chicago. Okay? Now, if you come down to the detail, it says subject, Leandro A.K. Etal, drug matter. What? Drug matter. Request of the Bureau. It is required that dash you can now see the redacted some names it says details this investigation is focusing on a drug trafficking organization based in gary the head of this drug trafficking organization is subject lee andrews edwards investigation has revealed that edward source of supply of multi kilograms of heroin is a group of Nigerian nationals based in Chicago, Illinois. I just wanted us to stop at this page. Now, going forward, the remaining 200 and something case pages gives the detail, what happened, how they went to court, how the court found them, the evidence they presented, how they were convicted, and the charges, it is heroin. Go back and note that it is heroin we are talking about. Heroin and cocaine are what is called class A drug. Anywhere in the world you're caught with it, you're going. So the whole essence of what we wanted to achieve and establish this night is to say, we have this document now in our possession and from tomorrow in detail, we were not gonna, uh, we are gonna run sack through the pages because it just came as we're about to come on air, 12 minutes past 8 p.m. 12 minutes past 8 p.m. But I have to scan through and got to the point where I say, good, we are gonna take it off from here. And so from tomorrow, we are gonna begin to find how did they arrive? Why did they not arrest who they're supposed to arrest? Why did they say 460? thousand dollars for feature and other things but one thing is important here the drug enforcement agency and fbi worked together so the question we need to ask now is that letter that letter that 
they told us that the that um, the consular in Lagos wrote to Balogun, the late IG of police, stating that FBI claimed they do not have anything, no record of this name in their data. Where did that letter come from? Did somebody forge that letter? Is it impossible? People can forge university certificates. <laughs> I don't know if you've known anyone who has forged university certificate, but it is possible. People can forge GCE certificate. I don't know if you know anyone who has forged one before, but you know what I mean. Can even forge for a school that is not existing. So if those things can be forged, the question is, that letter that the president's lawyer presented in the court, which was dated 19, was it 2003, saying that F via the U.S. consulate in Lagos, saying that FBI said, ah, we have never seen anything like this name in our file. How come now? How far? Because this one is coming from FBI. And it is dated April, no, 4th of October, 1990. 4th of October, 1990. How come FBI had this and somebody is telling us that FBI has checked and they don't have anything in their record? Are we beginning to piece one and one, and one together? And are we beginning to see also that our judges deliberately don't want to ask the right questions because they don't want to open more of the Pandora box. They know. They know what happened. And they decided to use technicality. Oh, we wanted you to submit this in A4 letterheaded paper. Let, paper. Why did you submit it in A3 or A2? Therefore, this will not be accepted. Oh, we wanted you to submit it with a, a, a plastic box. Why did you bring your evidence into the court with a, 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 a wood box? Because of that, every evidence that is inside, we trash it. They use technicality. Because as I've said in this space, if they dare touch the evidence, the smell will be so stinking that the whole world will be surprised if they say they didn't see anything there. So they deliberately just use technicality to bounce off everything. But you know why? The reason is because he that comes to equity must, as they say, come with a clean hand. Let us listen to what Olisa Bakoba said about the kind of thing that is happening in the way they recruit in our judiciary. Let's listen to it. and We tie it up here for you to understand what we mean. That children and other relatives of serving and retired judges and justices are being appointed into judicial offices at the expense of more qualified candidates lacking in such privilege and backing. It is asserted that the process of appointment to judicial positions are deliberately conducted to give undue advantage to the children spouses and mistresses of serving and retired judges and <laughs> managers of judicial offices in that regard do you do you have anyone in mind uh, because it's clay innuendo uh, do, do you know some of these <laughs> some of these uh, uh, <laughs> children and spouses and mistresses who have been appointed to the bench and who I did know. that if not the cj ruben ruben Ruben, I know a lot, but I won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of them because <laughs> I won't tell you because both of us, both you, Arise, and me, will be sued for libel. But I know them. <laughs> they are flooding the. They are flooding the judiciary. They are flooding in different names. So if I'm Olisa Bakoba, I put in my kid as some other name. I put my kid as uh, maybe uh, Ruben and all that. We know that it's been going on for a long long time it's been going on so that is the culture that Rufai referred to it's got to stop and do you know what we actually have in place an institutional structure for the appointment of judges it's not working it's been in place since 2013 it's in the constitution yeah. you've got it's to publish names you know like 
Yes, it's a, no, it's a, it's a guideline. Yeah. It's like you know a marriage ban. Does anyone have any objection to the Sabakoba marrying Lilian Abakoba? Please say. But they don't do it, <laughs> so that they can smuggle all these people in. Okay. On the point whether the okay, um, that's, that's it. I have a whole lot I need to sift off out of this place. Now remember, yesterday this same man mentioned what happened under Justice Mustafa, the late Justice Mustafa. Mustafa, not Mustafa. The 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 cleaning up of the judiciary that was rec that that his his tenure as the chief justice of the Fed federation gathered them and recommended for the government for the judiciary to implement. Okay, that's number one. Secondly, this guideline for the appointment of judges you've heard him now say it was in 2013. thirdly you may have been hearing about justice uwai's reports on how to reform INEC, which till today everybody's saying why hasn't INEC been reformed according to justice uwai's reports now let me ask you a question all these three landmark reform models that have been jettisoned. Do you know who was in power when those things came? Who was the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria then? His name. Now, the person who called the Justice Uwais panel was Yaradua. But of course, you know, he couldn't finish his tenure. Good luck, Jonathan, took over. And good luck, Jonathan, started implementing it because that was how we got the so-called card reader. Is it not true? The card reader that even threw him out of government. So you see that Jonathan's government, as much as they said was corrupt, and the media bought into it and they kicked him out for it was actually on the verge of cleaning up the internal the urgent table of our institutions and they kicked him out and they came in since 2015 and they dumped everything because this according to him now this procedure for appointing judges, chief justices, had been there since 2013. Jonathan left power since 2015. So what has happened? We have had Onogen. We've had Mukhtar. We've had the, the other one that left before the final. We've had four chief justices of the Federation between the time Jonathan left office and now, and nothing has happened. And they kept the system same old, same old, because the system, that dirty system benefits them. Now, secondly, this thing, Ruben Abati read now, he read it from the speech of justice, Datijo Muhammad retired now. So it is not, we're not making allegations here. We are quoting him and listening to the question Ruben Abati asked um, Ulisa Abakoba SAN. He said, Who did that if not the CJN? Did you hear that? And the reason why he asked him who did that is because it is the CJN that appoints judges, that also forward the names of the judges to the president for approval. It is him that institutes the panel that will select, and it is on his desk that will clear it. That is number, number three. Number four is that he said, we know that it's been there for a long time. 
And he used the phrase, they, they have been flooding. To flood something means to, to you know, to jam pack it with, it makes it the majority. Do you agree with me? If you say you're flooded that place with the policemen, it means that policemen are everywhere. You can't escape them. Now, if our judiciary is currently flooded with people that came to be through dubious means, what do you expect? And listen, the, the allegation this man made here is very, very strong. That people even come with a different name. Which means we have today on our bench people with different names. And the executive know this thing. And so when they, when they have a case, they don't even need to use your mouth to tell you judge in my favor because they have your dozier they know that if you don't play ball they will throw you out in the streets so how do you expect judgment justice how how do we expect justice in this kind of system so obviously quickly is talking that she disagree who did not disagree the Supreme Court themselves spoke with double mouth five months ago. They were upholding the Electoral Act in the case of a governorship tussle. Five months after, they trashed the Electoral Act. So it's not about what is written in the law now. It's about who is the respondent or the petitioner. Where is our man? If our people those who are going to make keep us servicing our own self, plundering the system, if they are the petitioner, you will uphold their case. If they are the respondent, you will trash the petitioner's prayer, provided that their people come in and go. Because now they are like the, the judiciary is to me now, it's like the strong room where APC goes to hide Nigerian treasures that they have stolen from us. They go to the judiciary, the judiciary collect it, lock it and say, my guy, go and enjoy yourself. That's why they'll be the first to tell you, go to court. Which court? Because they know those people who sat, who are sitting on that bench, how they were hired in the first place. Even if you are hired that, that way, can you look the man who hired you in the face and deny him his prayer, whether he's guilty or not guilty? Can you do that? You can't do that at all. So that makes us begin to think, which one did those judges write by themselves? Starting from the, from the presidential election petitions court, and which one was written and handed over to them? And they say, yes, sir. Is this how, what you want me to read? No problem, sir. When do you want it? Tomorrow. Okay, we are, going to, we are going to tell the registrar to send out notice. We are giving judgment. That is why they listen to the motion of, of how many parties? Three political parties on a Monday. Collected their briefs officially on a Monday. Supreme Court. And delivered judgment on Thursday. And all seven members of the panel unanimously agree. Think about it. It's like someone wrote it and said, take it, it's okay, yes, sir. Is this the judgment? Yes. When do you want us? This week. Fine. Oh, yeah. Go do it. That is it. Now, remember what Yemi Yemi someone, I've forgotten the, that lady that was on, on, on channels on, on day before yesterday, when she was saying that Supreme Court has now made it impossible, IREV is now useless, and that has now put in jeopardy the election that is coming in, in Emo State next, is it this week or next week? I think it's next week. Emo State, Bayelsa State, and Kogi State, and all these places. 
especially emo states where they want to whatever happened apc want to come back there now look at what chidi odinkalo uh, um, um, posted today on his ex handle the government of Imo State will take over all hotel rooms in the state capital from 4th of November to 11th of November for purpose of rigging the governorship election by housing election administrators, election monitors, embedded reporters, etc. This is organized crime made to look like a legit transaction. Let's show Nigerians the proper letter from the Commissioner of Tourism. So every hotel room, every hotel room, now listen, he says, I wish to refer to a both subject and inform you that the Ministry of Tourism intends to rent and occupy all the rooms in your hotel, no matter the size and classification, from Saturday 4th November to Saturday 12th November, at your usual cost per room for full occupation. I therefore request you to submit to my office before 12 noon tomorrow, being 26th October, details of your accommodation bills for all the rooms highlighted covering the period for settlement. Your urgent cooperation will be appreciated. Now, it means even other political parties that will be having their own monitors, having their own team, they shut them out. Mm. Oh my God. And you know the funny thing? I was in a group and I was telling <laughs> I was telling them, I said for Imo State election, you have to make sure that all the pulling unit agents, that there are at least three, one whose signature will be required, one who will be on camera constantly until the election is completed and another one who will be monitoring the two, and that all three of them must, must, before the election, make commitments that they will appear before election petition tribunals. Because of this one, court is telling us that um, IREF doesn't matter. Where is the EC8A? But even at that, courts is for the highest bidder and you see what the supreme court has done is to remind the likes of the governor of imo state that listen listen as it was before so it is because the supreme court judgment that told the world in their own judgment that apc did not participate in 2019 election is still there pending yet apc is ruling the judgment of the Supreme Court says there was no candidate by APC. Yet, APC is ruling. And they promise us they will revisit it before this election. After three and a half years, they have shifted it indefinitely. The CJN is a human being, you know that. And what the question is, what was the price the price the CGN may have paid to compromise our system is the blessing of making his son a judge. So it's about them, them. about him, his family, just as was said there. It says, at the expense of the qualified, the people who are flooded in the judiciary these days at the bench are people who are not even qualified at the expense of the qualified, and they deliberately give undue advantage to spouses, relations, children, and mistresses. That's our judiciary. I think, I don't know if we have anything, but I think I would really like us to leave it, keep it short this way so we can have time to get ready for the FBI assignment that we need to start working. Everybody's going back to library to read now. Yes, uh, honestly, I want to just say that uh, this party, APC, like people will say, may Nigeria never happen to you. I just want to say, may APC never yeah. happen to Nigeria. I don't know where this party came out from. You know, they don't have 
any interest of the people at heart. They do things just to please themselves. They don't even want to like look at the, the, the consequences of their actions. You can imagine the governor booking all the hotels just for the APC and people that will be coming into the state to help them in this election. Let me not even call it that. I don't know if I will say in this election, Ricky, because we've known the, the governor of uh, Imo State, you know, every anytime there is an election in that state, there's always an exposition on how they are trying to add more voters' names, people that are dead, children, and all that. We've seen it even in so many times where each time there is an election in that state, there will be so many revelations as to what is going on, even in his own local government, where they don't even have a, so much a population. You end up seeing the names of people, the number of names exceeding the number of the, the actual population on ground. So we've always seen his name appear in matters like that. And you can see the extra step they are taking now to book all the hotels at the expense of who? The people of Imo. You need to go to Imo State to see the roads. You know, I was talking to somebody who schools in Futo. He told me to come out from Futo to the state, to the city. That is not even that uh, a, a very long distance. You need to see how much they have to pay because of the bad road, how rough, how terrible the roads are. Now, these people, they get all the security vote money. They get all the money that is allocated to them every month. They can't even use it to service, to give the people these basic uh, services that people are asking mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. You need to go to Imo State. When you go to Imo State, you'll be asking if, especially, they, let me just say the South is, but especially Imo State. Imo State. And some people will tell you it's unknown government, is this, is that. See, they name the Carlo who is fighting for Biafra. It's not even from Imo State. But you need to go and see how Imo State people are really suffering. Nothing is happening. The businesses there are not even working. Many people from that state are like looking for where to go. People are leaving the state. You only end up seeing all these boys who are doing all this bad stuff to make money at all costs. Imo State that used to be one of the most educated. And you see people, even when it comes to jam registration, uh, GC, EYEC, all that, they are always at the forefront. But all these things are no longer happening. People are living in fear. It's either that the army attack these people or these people attack the army. And this government is not even paying attention to all these things to address it. He just wants to come back at all costs. So you can imagine him booking all the hotels in Imo State, not considering other parties. PDP is there. Uh, Labour Party is there. And other smaller parties, you know, they are there. They'll be coming into participate they have their own people coming from other places to participate but, but they've booked it i'm just wondering if they will be the one to book for i next staff and all that come this is government that will pay this money so is a loss of revenue from fourth to eleventh hmm. so you can imagine all the revenue the state government would have earned and other businesses would have transacted if normal business is happening because who are they going to camp in those rooms for seven days? These are their thugs. These are the party people they are going to, the INEC people they are going to bribe. And this mm. is... Maybe the, where they will stay to turn prints and all that. You know this election? <laughs> where they will stay and turn prints. You know? Oh. Because now, mm -hmm. now that they have booked the whole hotel, they can now put more poles in front of the hotel and say, what are you coming here? One client booked this place. So what are you coming to do? So whatever is happening in those hotel rooms, nobody will know. Business. It's nobody's business. And before you know it, result is declared. People will be queuing. <laughs> hey, I'm waiting to see this. People will be queuing, waiting for, for election material. And they will hear result declared. And they will tell you, go to court. And if I come and say, election was held, the court will uphold it because I is the engine that will never lie and can never make mistake. It's sorted. Okay. 
we are really in a big mess with this party APC. I, I just pray that uh, a big trouble. Seriously. <laughs> yes. Human so guys, yeah, that's where we'll be ending it tonight. Yeah, we we'll just pray that the election in Imo State will, will take a good shape and let INEC do its job. They shouldn't go there and become partisan because uh, with the ruling that the Supreme Court gave us, you can see that you know this election violence is going to is something that is not going to stop anytime soon because this technology was meant to reduce all those incidences but from the look of things they've told us that the irf does not matter in deciding who won the election it doesn't have any place you know in taking decision declaring who came out as the winner of an election so that will make it easy for them to tpex cancel rewrite and all that because you can no longer depend on what is on the irf because that that was just where the confusion you know came from they made it in a way that obedience so much believed INEC and peter obi is somebody that wants to believe the authority anything they say he wants to embrace it and encourage his followers to equally believe whatever information that they are giving out to us so that was how we believed INEC. we believed everything INEC told us but we saw what happened and the supreme court has come to say yes INEC has the right to take any decision you know the decision they gave us they abandoned it but the supreme court has approved it that they did their job well so we don't have any other option i just prayed i don't even know how this nigeria is going to like get better if this electoral system is not being you know if we, if we don't get it right and if the supreme court the judiciary is not ready to help us get it right i just wonder how nigeria will regain its as in its as supposed state in the in it out there so that the world will know that we also have a country because as it stands now we don't really have a country now we have a president that is said to have forged his certificate and the supreme court still gave him that pass mark somebody that has drug related issue it wasn't mentioned during the final judgment and now behold the fbi has, has really started releasing the files they promised the people somebody was saying if this was to be in nigeria that people went to court with fbi it wouldn't have happened that these files would be released so we really have issues when it comes to our institutions building strong institutions that we can rely on like our judiciary look at the INEC. INEC is supposed to be an independent body but you can imagine the level of influence that you know INEC that is being that INEC is experiencing because the politicians won't allow them to do their job and they cannot say no because it is those politicians who still, that will still give them the, the position in INEC. So they cannot like rebel against their master. That's just what we are suffering from. So we look forward to a better Nigeria. So Doc, I don't know what your closing thoughts are, but we can call it a day at this point. We look forward to miraculous intervention in Nigeria. Thank you. Good night all. Good night. So thank you so much. So yeah. our viewers, thank you. And from tomorrow, we'll keep bringing you updates uh, on this FBI topic so that we we'll get to know what the files contain. And uh, yeah, like we've always said, it's good to make everything fair. Possibly there is nothing indicting. Possibly the, the, the president does not even have to bother himself, you know? So it's good that they've released the files as promised. And they told us every month they'll be releasing five, 500 pages. So we look forward to getting all of them and then going through them to tell you guys what and what they contain. But if you want to read it on your own, this is the website, plain site. You can go there and maybe glance through the contents of the pages. Thank you so much for tonight's live show. Please do well to join us tomorrow. Don't forget to like this video so that YouTube can recommend it for more people to watch. Subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and God bless you. Good night.